Image tags are weird. Like, what is this tiny space under the image? I didn't put it there. Or this, these columns are supposed to be the same width, but the image is gigantic. Or this, why is the image all stretched out like that? Why? Why is this happening? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's the image tag. And in this video, I'll show you why these strange quirks happen, and more importantly, how you can make them go away. Sound good? Let's get into it. All right, so here's the first example of weird image issues. In this web page, we have an image of a cute little turtle along with some text. Now, both the image and text are in a div with a class frame, which I've added to add a six pixel black border around each of them. Now, under the image, you can see that there's this tiny little white space, but there's nothing in the image styles that's adding that extra space. We can't seem to see where the space is coming from if we inspect the image or the frame div styles. So why is this happening? Well, it has to do with how image tags are displayed on websites in what's called the flow layout or the normal flow of a web document. This is how HTML tags will be displayed on the page by default before any CSS is added. In the normal flow, by default, most elements on a page are either block or inline elements. Block elements will take up 100% of the available width and will be added in the block direction, which is vertically one under the other. Some examples of block elements are H tags for headlines, P tags for paragraphs, and div elements. Inline elements will only take up as much space as their content, and they'll be added in the inline direction, which is horizontally. You can think of inline elements like typing words onto a page. Each word is added next to the one before it, and so on, and when they reach the end of a line, they'll wrap to the next line. Some examples of inline elements are span tags, strong tags, or emphasis tags. Most of these inline tags are for styling text within a block. For example, if you have a paragraph, but you want to make a few words in it bold, you could add a strong tag inside the paragraph tag surrounding those words. And you wouldn't want those words inside the strong tag to start a new line, right? You would want them to continue the inline flow of words inside the paragraph. That all makes sense, right? But you know what else is an inline element by default? You guessed it, image tags. Now, I'm not gonna try to guess why image tags were originally set to be displayed the same way text elements are. I'm just here to tell you what weird issues came out of this decision. Remember when you were learning how to write? You may have practiced writing letters on paper that had lines. And ideally, you had to make all the letters sit on the bottom line, which is also called the baseline. But there were some letters that partially extended below the baseline. Lowercase letters like G, Y, P, and Q have what's called descenders, which is the part that extends below that baseline. Now, going back to the web, to display text, you don't want the text elements to end right at the baseline because some letters do need that little bit of space below it. So the browser is automatically going to add a tiny little bit of space for any descender letters that might exist in the text. And that extra space at the bottom is added to any inline element. And since images by default are inline elements, they too will have that space added for descenders. So that's what's happening here and why we have this tiny little bit of white space. The size of the space is actually dependent on the font size. So if we go to the parent frame div and we change a font size to be two rems, and if we keep increasing it, you can see that the space is gonna get larger as the font size increases and get smaller if the font size decreases. So how do we get rid of this space, right? Well, my preferred method is to set the image to be display block so that it'll no longer be an inline element, but a block element. And this does work. As a side note, I will usually globally set all image tags to be display block by default in order to avoid these weird issues like this. Now, other solutions for this that you might've seen are to go to the parent and set display grid or display flex on the parent. This makes the image a grid or flex child, which will automatically be set to display block, removing that space. Another solution that works is to set on the parent the font size to be zero, which will essentially make the descender space also zero. However, I like setting display block on all images because it feels less like a roundabout fix and more of just like a direct solution. 
Now, next up, we have a card class div that is a flex parent and it has two flex children, an image and a div with text. Now, both the flex children are set to flex one, which should hypothetically make the available space divided equally between them. But here we can see the image is way bigger than the text. What gives? If we inspect the image tag and then go to the layout tab, we can see some information on how Flexbox has calculated its final size. We set the flex shorthand property on both children to one, which means the flex basis or the initial size is going to be zero. And then the children will grow an amount based on their flex grow number and the available space. So according to this, the image is supposed to grow 441.2 pixels, but the final size is larger than that. It's at 600 pixels because it says something is clamping the image to a minimum size of 600 pixels. So what's locking this image at 600? Well, in the rules, we haven't set any styles for this image. So the image is going to display at what it's called its natural dimensions, which is taken from the actual image file size. Now, if we hover over the image tag source, Firefox is going to pop up this little pop-up window with a preview of the image. And it also tells us that the image size is 600 pixels wide by 800 pixels tall. This intrinsic size of the image file is larger than what Flexbox would size it at, causing it to get clamped to the larger size. A similar thing is actually also going to happen with CSS Grid. So if we go back to the parent card div, and in the inline styles, we add display grid, and we want to make two columns in grid template columns and set it to two comma one FR to create two columns that should be equal width. But as you can see, the large image again is going to be clamped to the natural dimensions of 600 pixels wide, forcing the column to grow larger than what grid would like it to be. So there are a couple of solutions to this problem. One is if you add width and height attributes to the image tag in the markup that are smaller than what the Flexbox or grid sizing wants, then the image is not going to be clamped to a larger minimum size. So in the image tag, I'm going to right click, edit as HTML, and then I'll add a width of 300 and a height of 400. So this is half the size of the original 600 by 800 pixels. So now the image is going to be sized to those dimensions. And since this is making the image smaller than the grid column width, which we can see here, there's now going to be a little bit of extra space next to the image. Let's now go back to Flexbox. So in the card div, which is the parent, I'm going to uncheck our grid styles to make it go back to Flexbox. And we can see that the image is getting stretched out in order to fit the two flex child elements are now the same width, but the image is getting kind of stretched out. So to fix that, we need to set width of 100% and height to auto. So that the image will maintain its normal aspect ratio. However, if you're working with responsive layouts, the image is going to need to be different widths at different viewport or container widths. So you really shouldn't be using the HTML width and height attributes in order to control the size. These attributes are really just so the browser knows what aspect ratio the image is supposed to be and that it'll know how much vertical space to leave on the page so that it can take up the correct amount of space while the image file is itself loading. This is going to prevent this little flash of content shift that you might see sometimes while the image file is getting downloaded. Now, a better solution to this that I generally use is to go into my styles in VS Code and add a global style rule for image tags and set the width to 100% and height to auto. So this is going to make image tags that are flex children set their width according to what Flexbox wants. And it gets rid of the clamping to a minimum size, making the final size whatever Flexbox set the image to grow to. And this also fixes the same image with grid because it's making the image width match the width of the grid column. However, even if you do set width to 100% and height to auto for all image tags, you might still run into some weird issues with Flexbox. So Flexbox by default is going to vertically stretch all the flex children on a row to be the same height. This is because the default value of align items is set to normal, which with Flexbox behaves similar to stretch. 
Now, this is super handy, for example, if you have cards with background colors that have different lengths of content and you want them all to be the same height because Flexbox will do that automatically. And as a side note, making all the elements in a row the same height at all viewports before Flexbox existed was a nightmare. So it's actually really nice that Flexbox does this for you by default. But if you have two images that are flex children, but they have different aspect ratios, Flexbox is going to stretch their heights to be the same, which can cause the shorter image to be distorted, as we can see here on the right side. This will happen even if you have width set to 100% and height to auto for both images. So here are a couple of solutions to fix stretched images that are flex children. One solution is to go into the flex parent rules and set a different align items value. For example, you can set center. You could also set it to start or to end. This is going to stop stretching that shorter image to match the height of a taller one, but it's going to result in having extra space around that shorter image. Now, if you want the images to be the same height, but without that extra space, you can essentially zoom and crop the smaller image to fit the height by setting object fit to cover. This is similar to background size cover that you may have seen with background images, but it's something that you can set on image tags. All right, and that's how to fix some of those weird issues that you might see with image tags. Now, are there any other weird quirks with images that you've seen? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.